Bring us in, babe. Welcome to Coco, Coco Caliente. <laughs> baby girl Lisa. Oh, my God. No, baby girl Lisa. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> um, it is 2021. Everybody has been waiting for 2020 to come to an end. So, yay. Yeah, actually, very big yay. And I did want to, uh, one thing that I want to do consistently now is do the national day. Day. Okay. You know how every once in a while I do it. And, okay. But so today would be January 7th, Thursday, January 7th. Okay. And two national days today, National Bobblehead Day. Oh, that reminds me of The Office. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dwight Schrute with his bobblehead. And actually, uh, you know where, if you had to guess what country the bobbleheads were like kind of invented or where it came mm-hmm. from. It's not the U.S.? It's not the U.S., no. Hey, I'm not sure. Germany. Oh. Of all places. And they called them bobbers or nodders. Mm-hmm. Right, and then it didn't come to the U.S. like it became a big thing in like the fifties and sixties, and then it kind of phased out, and then it came back in the nineties. Yeah, that's and why did they come about? Do you know? I have no idea. I didn't get that far into those, the research. Do you remember those uh, big? What, they're called like fat heads that you used to put on your wall. The like, stickers. I remember. Yeah. yeah, it was like the sports, like life size stickers. Jesse, my brother, had one of he those. He had one. Do you remember what what it was? A fat head. It was of what? Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those. Those were a stickers. big. Those, those were, were huge. Those were a big deal for a little bit. But that was like, I think um, when we went to any sporting events, I always wanted a bobblehead. <laughs> like I watched the Detroit Pistons. I was like, I they want. still give them out now. It's yeah. if you go uh, as I remember, I can't. I think it was, I went to a baseball game in California once when mm-hmm. I lived over there. Stupid security system in the background. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, I, I think I went to a game in California once, um, and they were giving out bobbleheads. It seems like a sports thing, totally. Really, another national day. Mm-hmm. It's National Tempura Day. Tempura, like tempura shrimp. Okay, so this is so when I looked this up, and, and I I felt a little dumb when I was looking at it. Mm-hmm. What? The person listening and Nicole, so the person listening is going to be like Nicole now. What is tempura? And if you know this, it's a good trivia question, but like what is tempura itself? That's a really good question. I'm not sure. So when I think of tempura shrimp. I think of fish. It's, no, I I, I mean, it's a breaded shrimp that kind of has like coconut on it. Mm -hmm. So tempura must have something to do with coconut and breading. Okay. A type of food, a style of food. You're very. You're a lot closer. For some reason, I thought tempura was a type of fish. Oh, okay. Like I thought it was a species of fish oh, called tempura. Okay, no. For some reason, uh-huh. I was completely off. But tempura is just the batter. The batter. It's okay. the batter. Okay. So specifically, battered uh, seafood or vegetables okay. would be the dish, right? Interesting. And so that would be the tempura, whatever. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So it's a style of cooking, and actually, it originated in Japan. Okay. But it was brought to them by the way of the Portuguese in like the 15 whatever. Oh. Yeah, the Portuguese taught them how to do it and then they kind of like took off. It's like a Japanese cuisine type thing. It's really good. Tempura shrimp is really good. <laughs> yeah. I guess the, the... I've never had vegetables, but that sounds really good too. Yeah. Now they do tempura sushi. Oh. Yeah. I've heard uh, I've heard of that tempura sushi. Interesting. I guess the main ingredients in the tempura batter is, I guess, ice cold water, flour, and egg yolk. And, you know, they add I a always, bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Now. I always taste coconut. I don't know. Well, that, I think that's your favorite style. Like the oh, coconut yeah, shrimp. Yeah, yeah. You're you know? right. Maybe I do get, maybe I hit coconut shrimp. You're right. <laughs> and I'm. Because you've even got that it. at the house. Yeah, I have. But sometimes it's like too coconutty where it tastes like I just took a bite of my coconut butter lotion. <laughs> Have you ever had a coconut where they just cut the top? Oh, you did that with me in uh, when we went to what country were we in um, for the Amazing Race? We were. That's when we had to. We were with Chris. Were we Laos? And Colin. No, um, we had to run to the badminton. Where was that? That wasn't Vietnam, was it? No. It was another uh, South uh, East Asian country. I'm terrible. I won't know. I, I think, it all blurs uh, together for me. But, but yeah, we did. We had a. Um, oh my anyways, gosh, brain fart. Some, yeah, I know somebody is in their car at home being like, "This is a country that you went to, stupid." Um, anyways, we were uh, with Christy and Colin, and some like tourists. Not they weren't tourists; they were locals. Uh-huh. Bought us a coconut um, to drink while we were waiting for our bus. Yeah, it, and it, we. We couldn't even enjoy it that much because we were just so thirsty, too. We were just- I was, like, weirded out by it. <laughs> we were like, ugh. I've had them in Puerto Rico, 
right? And it, it is so good. And, and you can, they have it to where you can mm-hmm. open it up and actually eat the coconut too. Yeah, you I've know? never done that. I, I always buy, so this is a really weird fact. Uh-huh. I always buy a coconut from the grocery store and I just leave it in our kitchen. Yeah, what the heck is that about? I, I think, think I just threw it away. my what? nickname. Did you better not throw it away? That's good luck. I threw it away. It had been oh sitting there God. rotting for so long. You're going to have to buy another rotting. one. It rotting. You cannot get rid of the coconut. Do coconuts rot? I mean, it wasn't rotting from the outside. It was fine, Victor. You cannot throw away my coconuts. I'm very <laughs> pissed off right now. Well, you can buy another coconut. Obviously, it hasn't been over there. Oh you my... haven't noticed it. Yes, actually, I just thought you put it somewhere else. Until just Anyways, now. I, I always buy a coconut from the store because mm-hmm. I don't know why. It's like a good luck Next thing. time you buy it, you should cut it open. We should just have some coconut. All right, we'll try it. But I think we're going to have to like buy a machete too. Nobody buys coconuts in this area, no. so that's why I buy one, just so that way. <laughs> that's what I was telling Nicole about avocados, right? So avocados uh, here, especially where we are in Michigan, they're normally really small, right? They're, they come in like small, like the size of your fist. Mm-hmm. Um, but where I'm from in Puerto Rico, we have them that grow on our trees, and they're literally the size, it's almost like the size of a melon. I don't even know, or smaller, maybe. Like it just a, seems a like a avocado that big wouldn't taste good. Oh, it tastes so good. Why wouldn't it taste good? Because, and it's natural. Because, right, so... No when, hormones or anything. When it just I think like of that. like overgrown fruit and veggies, it just makes me, you know, because you're... But it's not overgrown, so the ones here are, are what? We pick them prematurely, they're a different species. No, they're, they're, they're actually... So the ones that we have, they're natural and they grow without any hormones or pesticides or anything like that. Right. Unless you're buying organic avocados, they're normally just farmed, right? Mm-hmm. Made to grow a certain way so they can be harvested better, more symmetrical. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, I'm so confused on why they're so much bigger there. Um, and probably just the tropical environment, you know, the the the, I mean, these the climate are that they're hu- into. They're grow. huge. They're like <laughs> they're huge, and so it's so confusing because it's like, okay, can I have like half of an avocado for two hundred calories? Like this thing would be like five thousand calories. <laughs> like, what do you what do you do fats. with this gigantic avocado? <laughs> I mean, I love avocado. Don't get me wrong, but like, dang, I don't yeah. know. We eat them a lot too at home. Um, just with our rice and our meals. Anyway, switching gears entirely. Some so I was so I had this uh I had a website that I used to use, right? It was called Stumble Upon. And I think I've told you about oh, it yeah, before. Yeah. Basically you can go in and you and it's not called Stumble Upon anymore. I, I don't know what it's called. It the site changed names. Uh let me see if I can see what it's called now. A mix. Now it's called Mix. So if you guys are interested, it's really cool. So you download Mix to your browser and then you can just keep hitting Next and you've already pre-selected the categories and things that you like. So Nicole likes animals. So she would pick animals, farms. She could pick farms, flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, And it would auto-generate new pages for her to go to that she would never see or normally see. You know, it's kind of very randomized and you Mm -hmm. just see stuff, right? So for me, it comes up a lot of articles on science and uh, technology and all that stuff. One article that I saw was about the top science things of 2020. One thing that I saw that really stood out, and this is kind of crazy. So NASA, I don't know how long ago, they sent the Voyager 2 out into space, right? And this thing has all this type of technology on it because it can't have fuel. So they have to regulate how much power it's using so it doesn't run out of power over that time, right? Mm -hmm. This thing is 11.5 billion miles away. Right, the furthest thing that has ever been from Earth that NASA is still communicating with and getting information from, Mm -hmm. it has a malfunction, right? And for the malfunction, it has an auto shut off because the malfunction is that it's using too much power, okay? And then so there's this auto shut off thing. Anyway, they send a message to it, like a coding message from here in the the U.S. Obviously, and they send a message, and it takes 17 hours to get there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and then it takes 17 hours for the message to come back from the thing saying that it received the message. And anyways, they fixed it. But how crazy is that? Something that is 11.5 billion miles away takes them 17 hours to get a message to it and they fix it. And over here, sometimes I'm struggling to send a text message that has a picture in it. Yeah, that is crazy. I mean... Isn't that mind-blowing? Yeah, it's a little over my head. Um, <laughs> I can but, see, but I'm just like, I just get so like, that's, I don't know. For me, I can't really quite comprehend whatever, everything you just said, because it's just like, I don't understand. 
Okay. I guess for me, it's just kind of, if you don't understand or appreciate, it's not that, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Okay. But fair I know. No, I know that it's like really crazy and stuff, but I'm not sure how to react <laughs> because I'm sure it's like, oh my gosh. But I'm just thinking like, yeah, it probably should take 17 hours. <laughs> and yeah, they probably should be able to fix that. Like, well, the, the, <laughs> the, I just, I did never think ever thought that that would be a thing that we as humans would ever be able to do. Yeah, Send think, a thing that far, keep communication with it mm-hmm. and fix it remotely, right? Like still be able to fix it so it didn't malfunction and lose there's some, contact with it. It's just there's wicked smart people out there, um, and that's what they do. Mm-hmm. They they do all these secret things that we have no idea about. Well, that's okay. So that's what that 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 is exactly what you just said is what it made me think of. If we're capable of that, right? What is like NASA and the government have brewing or technology that they have that we don't even know of until ten years down the line that they're using now that the public doesn't have access to? Right. There's so many things. It's it's quite scary. <sighs> Because technology is not my thing. I'm going to say it straight up like oh, it's, I, I, it's not my thing at all. I despise it. I, I hate it. And I mean, yes, it can do good things. But like doing the simplest thing, I was on aisle planner today changing the guest list like for our wedding thinking, okay, we're probably going to have something more intimate. And I don't even know how to add a freaking guest. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to add a guest. I had to m- message my wedding planner and said, I'm sorry, but I don't know how to add a guest. Like, can you add this guest in? <laughs> and how pathetic is that? Like, oh, I just, out. I cannot deal with like technology stuff. I don't know. Um, But anyways, I'm glad that you're good at it because... I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I would not have anything set up at all. Well, we have we have a good dynamic. This episode is brought to you by Issue. You have content to push out and a story to share. Remove the complexity with Issue. They make content look amazing wherever you post exactly how you envisioned it. Issue is an all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital publications from brochures to magazines to sales collateral and more. It's perfect for creators, marketers, designers, educators, publishers, salespeople, or anyone that wants to make eye-catching content. With Issue, you create it once and distribute it everywhere. Everything is optimized to post on your website and social platforms like Instagram and Facebook, and they can even help you make animated Instagram stories. And you can start using Issue for free. They also have premium features that give a more customized experience. Get started with Issue today for free. If you sign up for a premium account, you will get 50% off when you go to issue.com slash podcast and use promo code Coco. That's issue, I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use promo code C-O-C-O at checkout for your free account or 50% off your premium account. That's issue dot com slash podcast with promo code Coco. It's 2021 now, so my favorite thing... Oh my God, Nicole has so many freaking favorite, planners in no, this house. My favorite thing to do every New Year's is order a planner. Like, I get so excited. It's, it's ridiculous. I put so much time into picking my planner because I know I'm going to look at it every single day for the next year. So um, it's just got to have everything. And I, <laughs> I spend probably too much on the planner, but at the same time... Um, yeah, I use it every day. So it's really important and and I don't know about you, but it's very exciting. Well, for Nicole, for a while it was an issue cuz we would go every time we went to the store, she would always get a notebook. Like another notebook. But I'm running out of notebooks now. Like <laughs> I I'm out. I need more um for sure cuz I use notebooks a lot. So I'm a person who writes writes things, writes my schedules, writes my list, writes mm-hmm. my grocery list. Um I'm not an app user. And so, well, you know what's crazy though, because I never did that, but for my mm-hmm. job now, I always have notebooks mm-hmm. on me, just little notepads. Yeah. Because I talk to somebody, hey, what time did this happen? Mm-hmm. Or what, you know, what, whatever. What's your name, first, last, middle, date of birth, mm-hmm. phone number? I'm always using that to jot down all these notes. I never use my phone. Right. But then a bunch of it is stored in my head too, yeah. you know? So I can just like, I can make a lot better material. If I'm writing, Mm -hmm. I realize that like if I want to write, if I want to say even um, put a caption out, like 
Uh, you, Victor bought me a brand new computer for Christmas, a laptop, <laughs> and so fiance of the year. Yeah, he freaking surprised me. I was like, Victor, are you? He goes above and beyond, like too big for Christmas, and I always feel like an idiot. <laughs> but I did get him a treadmill, actually, and a really awesome treadmill. We'll talk so, about that story soon enough. Um, but anyways, where what was I talking about? Writing stuff down, you work oh, better. Yeah. So then, even I realized like typing on a computer is better for me than typing on a phone, and so I can just get my thoughts out and I feel so much better that's something that I would highly advise people to do because you know it's very easy to say and I'm talking to like the big brother um therapist uh what um doctor she calls us every week um I think she calls all contestants and she's like maybe uh and I've been doing well and she's just like uh, and if you ever feel, you know, overwhelmed, maybe just write some thoughts on paper. And I'm just mm-hmm. thinking like, yeah, I know, like everyone says you should do that, <laughs> but whatever. And then I actually did it and I used to do it. And oh my God, you feel so much better. So much better. That's a, that's, and actually has been, studies have shown that's a great form of therapy. Like if, especially if you're, uh, if you're angry with somebody, you know, you, uh, a significant <laughs> totally. other, a boss or something yeah, like that, write yeah. them a letter but never send it. Totally. Mm-hmm. Don't make the mistake and send it. But, yeah, write the letter. Don't you send it. You feel significantly better after to where you wouldn't. Um, I've written emails. I'm not going to lie. I've <laughs> written emails since and deleted them. <laughs> I, I've written emails since I've uh, been home. And I just I, – I chuckle when I read them back. I'm like, dang. Like, I would never send that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Switching gears one more again. What did we do for Christmas? How did we celebrate our Christmas or Christmas is? Um, so we did, we hung out with my family, my parents, my brother, his girlfriend, Ashley. So we had three separate Christmases. Yeah. Right. So we had a Christmas at, uh, it was basically at our parents' house the first day. Mm-hmm. Well, we had something at our house Christmas Eve, but we didn't do any gifts or anything. But like Christmas Day, we went yeah. to our parents' house. We did gifts over there, which kind of worked out because since COVID is kind of everything still locked down, yeah, can't go anywhere. And then the day after Christmas, we did Christmas at our house and we opened gifts here. Yeah. And then this, that Sunday, we did Christmas at her brother's house. It was like really nice because we didn't have to drag our presents to mm-hmm. everyone's house. Oh, I hate that. I hate doing that. And so that, and it, it was not, I think it was like snowing and stuff. So it's really nice to uh, host everybody. I would like to keep that up. And since we weren't going anywhere else, we figured let's have three celebrations. One thing that I did love this Christmas is not having to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, was that amazing. <laughs> like not to be overstuffed and full and like, clothing that's like tight that was that was awesome (laughs) i loved it yeah and nicole like she said we we had originally compromised on getting a treadmill for each other like one for both of us and i was like yeah that sounds like a great idea but in the back i was scheming trying to find nicole a laptop i bought her a laptop i had it shipped to work so she didn't know i had it and uh, sneaky so yeah the the treadmill ended up being my gift and it's perfect though we both use it every day it's Um, it's been awesome like today he's like are you gonna get on a treadmill it's like no i'm busy he's like come on we have a system like you go and then i go and i'm just like no i'm good i got stuff to do and he's like come on get on the treadmill i'm like fine (laughs) i'll get on the treadmill well because okay so i set up the treadmill and she's like right i i used it before new year's Right. And Nicole was like, well, I'm not, I'm going to start on January 1st. I'm going to start, you know, the new year's. And I was like, okay. And so I don't want her to get off track. She's been doing it. She took the rest day when she needed the rest day. I told she him I get two, day. I was like, I get two rest days a week. He's in like, the span of a week, not back to back. He's like, you can't use them two days in a row. <laughs> Cause I used one yesterday, but I, uh. I'm really, I'm really happy he made me do it. Well, speaking of which, the, which is good. So talking about New Year's and, okay, before I get into New Year's resolutions. Mm-hmm. So New Year's, we spent the day at Nicole's parents' house. It was a fun day. We got there around 3 and by 8 o'clock we were pooped. We were ready to go. <laughs> we were. But we had fun. We played games, you know. Got Chinese takeout. Got Chinese takeout and it was very low key and, and now we, we come home. And Nicole's messing with her phone on the bed. I played some Madden. Oh, I got a PlayStation 5. Uh, yeah, by- my parents got... They didn't even <laughs> wow. tell me. And, and Victor opened up a PlayStation 5 on Christmas morning. I was like, 
are you kidding me? Like you didn't tell me you got one because I just like gave up. I was like, they're too hard to find. Well, I didn't even ask for one, which is crazy. Nicole knew I kind of wanted one, but you know, I wasn't like gun ho and I knew they were expensive and hard to get. So I didn't even bother. And sure enough, they got me one. Didn't tell Nicole. I was flabbergasted. I was like, why didn't you tell me? Like you would have told him. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> I would not have told him. Um, so anyway, we get home from New Year's, uh, that evening before the new year and we're messing around. Then I, I look at Nicole and I was looking online to see what new year's programs are going on. Right. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, Justin Bieber is having a concert. Right. Yeah. And I was like, Hmm, it's 25 bucks. Nicole, would you want to watch? And anybody that knows that's listening now that went to what a, what a waste of $25 that was. <laughs> I am so sorry if you enjoyed it, but it was like 45 minutes delayed. I think Nicole and I only watched like 15 minutes of it when it struck the new year and we cut it off. It was fine though. It was really bad. It was a of. disappointment. But it was like, um, you know, it was fine. I feel bad for the DJ because you know, so when you go on and before Justin Bieber goes on, they had a little DJ going. You mm-hmm. know, he was doing his thing, kind of, because I guess they had some people there live on balconies or whatever. So you know, he didn't plan to do a an hour and a some odd long set. No. You know, like an hour and forty five minute set, which is I was assuming well, is what yeah. happened. It was a little bit weird because we started. Um, it was supposed to start like way sooner, like Victor said. And then so I was joking with him. I'm like, okay, so we're going to pay like a dollar a minute. Like, that's fine. And then it got to like 15 minutes to 12. I was like, oh my gosh. So he finally started. And then in like the second song, he forgot his words. <laughs> yeah, he forgot his words. <laughs> he just like said, but it, it made him so like human to me that I just chuckled because I feel like I was like, oh my gosh, the tabloids are going to blow up this <laughs> thing up. Like, Get over it, people. <laughs> well, and well, I think what was he? I think he did like three or four songs, and then he stopped to do the New Year celebration. Yeah, that's when we stopped watching, and then that's when we stopped and we were done. And I was like, well, "This is a waste of twenty five bucks." It, I just like didn't know his new songs either. So oh, from his last, so album. I just wanted to hear "Holy" really bad, and I didn't <laughs> hear it. But um, we were really tired. I'm surprised we even made it to midnight, to be honest. Oh, Nicole wanted to watch TV afterwards, and I was like, "Oh, I'm done." <laughs> Yeah, then I was like wired. I was like, okay, you know. (laughs) This episode is brought to you by World Series of Poker. Have you ever watched the World Series of Poker on TV and dreamed of winning big like the pros? The official World Series of Poker app lets you play real-time poker with poker fans around the world. It's as close to the real thing as you can get without the $10,000 buy-in. Ain't that the truth, though? I like playing. I like, I'm a big fan of Texas Hold'em, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I play, I like to bluff a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Luckily, it's not my money, but this has got me better uh, when we play against like your parents, Nicole, and their friends and stuff. I've gotten a lot better by playing, for sure. Yeah, you can learn a lot. Yeah. The World Series of Poker app is a great way to improve your poker, poker skills. And it's free to download. If you're tired of social distancing, now you can easily set up a virtual poker game with friends. And it's the number one free poker game. World Series of Poker always has tons of players online to match up against whenever you want to play. Best of all, you can get one million chips as a bonus gift when you join today. What's the holdup? Download the World Series of Poker app in the Apple App Store or on Google Play and Amazon now. And don't forget to use my promo code W-S-O-P-C-O-C-O for 1 million bonus chips when you sign up. That's 1 million bonus chips when you download the World Series of Poker app using promo code W-S-O-P-C-O-C-O. Anyway, so uh, i talking about New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Okay. One thing that you were saying was your rest day and then taking two rest days, which can lead to three rest days. Studies show that if you accept the fact that you're going to miss sometimes on your new year's resolutions yeah. to let yourself stumble but not fall yeah. right if you if you, being a stumble let's say you're doing a diet and mm-hmm. you stumble by having you know a couple slices of pizza mm-hmm. don't say oh well that's it for today and then you eat chips and ice cream or whatever no just okay, I had those couple slices of pizza, now I'm back on track. That's like really hard to do, but that's really smart to do. And I think that's why this is the first year I didn't make, first year I didn't make a list because I hold myself, I usually write like these 10 things that I have to do every day. If I don't, you're a failure Mm -hmm. and I go back to my old ways. Yeah. So I didn't make a list because I didn't want to put that much pressure on myself. And I think I'm moving in the right direction that I want to be in. 
and I'm making those small changes without um, putting too much pressure. Um, yeah, myself, if that well, makes sense. yeah, and and honestly, uh, based on a study that they did in like 1988, which they should definitely replicate, but f- about 44 percent of people stick with their New Year's resolutions. Holy crap! Which is actually quite high. I mean, that means there's another what 50. Five like percent really of people. High. I thought it would be like five. Less than that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and by I guess by Fourth of July, the other people are already you know off their resolution. But mm-hmm. still, I mean that that means there is hope. And uh, so a couple things that they said you could do is one, do that right, the cheat thing, like know that yeah. you're going to have that day or yeah. whatever, and just go back. Don't just completely cut it out. Totally. The other one is rethinking your resolution. Mm-hmm. So they're saying instead of saying I'm not going to eat crappy foods, yeah, you could say. I'm going to eat healthier. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, I'm going to, or uh, opposed to do instead of quit, right? I'm mm-hmm. going to do this thing opposed to I'm going to quit this oh, thing. Oh, I see. And that way it, it's it's better for you in your state of mind. You know, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna quit being lazy and just sitting on the couch all day, right? No, you can say I'm going to do more exercise. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to run more. I'm going to walk more mm-hmm. opposed to I'm going to quit doing this thing. Right. Right. And they said that That's helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Another thing which kind of seems very self-explanatory is having a partner or a, a, a mentor or a mm-hmm. coach, right? Somebody that you're doing it with yeah. to, to hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. That helps a ton. That helps a ton. You know, like, uh, you know, I want to do yoga 10 minutes a day with my mom, right? So yeah. you and your mom are doing it together and you're holding each other accountable. Or you can even just like via text, like send me, yeah. send me your meals, um, send me what you're eating today, I'll send mm-hmm. you what I'm eating today. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, another one is, uh, oh, this one was actually pretty cool because they did a study on this. So piggyback your things, right? So let's say you want to drink more water, yeah. right? And instead of just trying to force yourself to drink more water all throughout the day, attach it to something else that you already do, right? So every time I eat a meal, I'm going to make sure to drink this much oh. water, right? So the study that they did was with flossing, right? Mm-hmm. So most people don't, they'll brush your teeth all the time, but mm-hmm. they won't floss all the time. Mm-hmm. So what they did with the study is they had people floss before they brushed and floss after they brushed, right? But then that up people that flossed after they brushed ended up doing it more long-term than the ones that flossed before they brushed. I'm confused. So you're brushing your teeth every day and you're piggybacking flossing after you brush your teeth. Right. You're okay. supposed to floss after you brush. Do you floss after you brush? I don't floss. Okay, that's what I mean. So in the study <laughs> that they did, they got people and they said, yeah. all right, this group of people, I want you to floss after you brush. And this group of people, I want you to floss before you brush. All right? Okay. When the study continued on and they checked in back with them, the people that were flossing after they brushed were more apt to do that. The people that were flossing before they brushed dropped off faster. Okay. Because you have to brush your teeth okay. every day. So you're I thinking see. about brushing and then, okay, right after I brush, I floss. See, and I would think that it's opposite. Like that's why I thought maybe you had it backwards because you want to brush your teeth, right? I want to brush my teeth. Mm-hmm. So in order to brush my teeth, I have to floss first. Whereas I would just brush my teeth and be like, oh, I ain't flossing. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. to get to what I want, I... I think I would have to do what I don't want to do first. First, yeah. Well, um, the, in this study, it was like the piggyback. They the piggyback okay. whatever you want to do on something that you already do regularly. Mm. Uh, and that was another way to get you to stick to stuff. Um, and those are those were a few tips that I saw there. Those were the most, uh, the ones that I thought for me, that's like, oh, those seem like to help the most overall. Yeah, totally. And those are really good. And I think that that's weird Um it's kind of weird, but that's how I felt this year without ever reading anything or seeing anything. It's just I can't I can't be so strict on myself. And I just realized that because I fall off too fast. Mm-hmm. And I have to be patient. And I know that for some reason prior to this year, I was so dead set on everything had to be perfect. If it wasn't perfect, if I didn't do everything correct, like work out, eat healthy, do my skincare routine, work for this many hours a day, I just felt like what a waste I am. But now I think I'm just more patient and I know that I'll have good days and bad days, but I want to have more good days than than I did last year, right? So um, not letting myself feel bad for eating a piece of pizza or a cinnamon roll or whatever. I've been really bad on just letting my body. (laughs) Let me tell you people, whatever I wanted for the past, since I've been out of the house, um, 
just really let myself live. <laughs> it's <laughs> well, been fun. <laughs> and and what I tell people, especially from from my fitness background, is mm-hmm. if you're eating good, let's say eighty to ninety percent of the time, right. that other ten twenty percent is mm-hmm. not a big deal. And if anything, it keeps your sanity. It's the issue is when you're eating bad over fifty percent of the That's time. That's what I was doing. And then there's no way to. I mean, it's yeah. you're no way you're going to counteract that. Right. Um, with like. Mm-hmm. Even just exercising an hour a day, like no way are you going to... It's amazing what eating well does for your body because I was eating like poop and I was tired all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, and so now just like changing my eating slightly where it's better, more vegetables and less like junk, I'm not as tired. I wake up earlier. I just like feel better. I can do more in a day. It's It's... You have to remember to like fuel your body. Easier said than done because I don't do it. It's but the you have hardest to, part. It <laughs> you is have to the fuel hardest your part. body with like the best fuel you can, and um, it's not convenient. No, and like those are those are the main things: eating right, be staying hydrated, mm-hmm. drinking drinking a good amount of water, mm-hmm. exercising, and rest. Yeah, those. If you have those four things in mm-hmm. check, you're. I mean, you won't even get sick. Uh, that that's how crazy it is like you might get i mean you you can get sick but the chances of you getting sick drop mm-hmm. exponentially you you have more yeah. energy your mood is better your mental health and clarity is there mm-hmm. you're more productive i mean it's i mean studies have shown it time and time again right uh, it's really good i saw that there was this really which i fell asleep to last night you were working so you didn't know but um there's this new meditation series on netflix if anyone's interested oh really and it's really it's informational on how um it helps you like studies and and showing oh you know i'm gonna watch that yeah so i started watching it last night and it actually put me to sleep because there's like a meditation in the first episode and i was like (laughs) oh my god this is so nice and i fell right asleep and then i like shut it down is it a guided meditation it's a guided meditation in like the doc i think it's like a document Docu series? Uh, Docu series. I think it's just like I don't know really what it what, is. Is for it a sure. one thing or is it several things in there? There's several. Okay, so it's like a and, series. Yeah, it's, it's a series. Yeah, and um, but it's not just like meditation, um, that you listen to or whatever. It's no, like no, no, talking no. It's about a, how yeah. they talk about how your brain, like literally, from doing nothing, doing nothing is so good for you mm-hmm. that it literally makes your brain like tissue thicker like a muscle would in your bicep and it's like oh my god i need to meditate i want to make my brain bigger yeah i I was telling you that when you got back (laughs) from big brother that's it that's another thing that people talk about but it's hard to do it is hard to do it is hard i mean even hard to shut your mind off the first time if anybody meditates or if you've never meditated the first time you meditate it's hard to not think of things while you're trying to clear your mind Things always enter your mind. Oh, I got to do this later or this or this sound in the background or I got this itch, right? It's hard to not just Mm -hmm. sit there and do nothing and have a clear mind. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard. It sounds simple, but until you do it, you're just like, oh, shit. That's why when I do it, I'm like, am I doing this right? Like, (laughs) am I benefiting? Like, what the frick am I doing? (laughs) So that's kind of where I get frustrated is is I don't know if I'm doing it right. Yeah. No, <laughs> but I think the more you do it, the better you will be. Absolutely. Uh, Nicole, I, I'm, oh, I'm going to interject and do the Spanish word of the day right here, right okay. in the middle before I go into the next thing because I think we can transition kind of. Okay. The Spanish word of the day is pensar. I don't know if we did this one before. What is it? Pensar. P-E-N-S-A-R. Pensar. Goals. No. What is it then? Uh, it has to do with what, kind of what we were talking Resolution? about. Resolution? Mm, Resolución. Oh, I would have got that. <laughs> uh, goals. We're talking about resolutions. We're talking about eating right, exercise, and... Thinking. Oh, thinking. Yeah, thinking, pensar, to Jeez, think. Jeez, that's a think. random word. It is a random word. But I was thinking about you being a COVID bride. Oh. Okay. And I was thinking how crappy it is to be a COVID bride right now. Uh, I know there's a lot worse things happening in the world, but to imagine getting married last year at the beginning of the year was a dream. And by the end of the year is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. So um, how has that been for you? 
Well, you know, a wedding is something that you always think about since you've been little uh-huh. and you just want yours to be so good, right? With yeah. all these cool things and dance routines and, you know. You, Decorations, yeah, flowers. It's just got to be, it's like perfect. It's like your big, big day where mm-hmm. you look at those pictures back for the rest of your life and remember it. Um And that's what initially I wanted. And I tried, I think, four times. Four times we had to cancel. And now I'm to the point of... Did we cancel four times or three times? Postpone. Um, Four times. We've postponed four times. Yeah. And so I think that it's to the point now where... It's. I don't feel the need for things to be perfect at all. It's actually quite... uh, You get some clarity. Oh, it's so, like, relieving. Yeah. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. And I think now just getting my close loved ones, like, real small, intimate wedding, Mm -hmm. um, I'd be so happy with. Oh, and just to dispel this, I guess not dispel, but I know people are like, well, why don't you just go and get married on paper and do a celebration later? We've thought about that, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not, you guys, you know, the people that have said it over and over again, you're not the first ones to say it. Nor will you be the last. We have definitely gone through thinking about that route. Uh, Nicole doesn't want to do that. I've mm-hmm. tried. Uh, yeah. <laughs> especially since she pays insurance out of pocket and my job has insurance, which is my biggest thing with it. Um, but no, it's it's just not something that we're going to do. Uh, and we're just working on another wedding. <laughs> <laughs> it'll it will be it'll happen it'll be great and it'll be what it was meant to meant to be so what what do you advise to people that might just be experiencing because people experience this at different levels right, right. somebody could have been planning yeah. a wedding in january mm-hmm. right and now it's not looking feasible for them depending on where they're at so what advice yeah, do you if give this them? is like your first time planning a wedding um because you just got engaged maybe over the holidays mm-hmm and you're, you know, you actually, <laughs> it might be okay, but um, I would just say to make sure your contracts say that the things are refundable. <laughs> um, yes, my, Refund A lot policy. of my contracts are not refundable because COVID wasn't around when I signed the contracts. So as far as like money and stuff goes, um, we've definitely lost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But I would say to be really flexible and just remember... It's so cliche and it's just like, it's your day. You're getting married to like the person you want to spend your life with. And so that's what's important. And if it's important to you to wait and have a huge wedding, wait and have a huge wedding. Like don't let people make you feel like you need to get it done now. Yeah. That's not, I didn't let people, we've been engaged for so long. We've been engaged way longer than we've been together. Like, we were together for one year before we got engaged, and now we've been engaged for like two years and some. Yeah. And so... Pushing three would be this year. Yeah. So I think like just to do what you want to do and what's important to you because at the end of the day, you're the one that it's got to be special to you. Mm-hmm. And if that is getting married at the courthouse, then go freaking do it. That's yeah. awesome. I always loved that in movies when they would just like... Um, the vow, I they think it was, where they and... just like, they're cute and they write their vows on the back of menus and they run like with their group of friends. Like, that's so cute. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. I just, uh, really want my family to be there and I'm just going to try to make it happen one more time, but just keep your head up. It'll, we're all going through it together and just be really thankful that that's your biggest problem right now. Yeah, absolutely. The vow, what, what's the actress in that? Is that the one where she loses her Rachel memory? Rachel McAdams. Yeah. With Channing Tatum? Yeah, I love that. Is that it's, that one? Yes, it's like, at the end, do they really get back together? Like, I think they do. They like meet up at a restaurant, it's snowing, but I'm like, God, I need more. I need <laughs> I need to to make sure that they're back together before this well, movie Well, at the end of the movie, because that was based on a true story. Oh, was it? Yeah, that was based on a true story, oh. and I think they ended up getting back together and get married and stuff. But yeah, that was based on a true story. Uh, for weird or normal, this today I am going to weird sh- or normal. I'm going to share a story that Victor thinks is probably really weird. Oh, here we go. Um, I don't know what she's going to say. This is going to be a surprise. And something that I do that I think is just like very normal. Okay. So, uh, as you know, <laughs> as I've mentioned several times before, I take care of cats. Mm-hmm. And 
Um, most recently, we have had a deaf blind cat come into our herd. Yes, you've heard that correctly. The cat cannot hear and cannot see. Um, and so we have had him, you know, he's a part of us now, part of our family. And he's kind of like, uh, he's, he's older, he's skinny. I think he has trouble obviously catching food. And uh, Just to give you a little reference, he's like a, he's a black cat with like, he's kind of a gray cat with like white stripes almost a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, like he, he's a little of- older. Yeah, um, and sure. he's not small. He's like he's a medium not, sized no, cat. No, I think he used to run the neighborhood. Nicole um, thinks he was the mafia boss he, over here in the town of Ubley. He definitely was because he has, an, one of his eyes got like clawed by another cat. And I think that because this other cat took over. Anyways, it's he just. He used to be the Meow Mix distributor and there's a <gasps> new distributor in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, we are getting him, um, we're getting him help uh, in. By the time you hear this, he's he'll already have seen the vets. Yeah. And um, anyways, so he, I found, of course, I ordered a heating pad and a bed. And Guys, he, if you see, we just, have. <laughs> they don't we, let me no, finish no. my story. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I just, because I, as she's telling the story and reminding me that we have cats and heating beds out there and food, I like, I just shake yeah. my head because it's we not. We have three we don't, heating beds that are occupied at all times. We don't own a farm, right? This is in our garage. Okay. okay. And so anyways, this cat needed help and I decided to, he wasn't eating much at first, but then I got him to eat because I was cooking him like turkey bacon. All our turkey bacon. Giving him like. Good thing that's cheap. I was giving him like milk, watered down milk because that's the only thing he would drink. And Mm. like I had to do what I had to do. Another cheap item. And so now he is freaking good. Like he is way better. He's strong. He um, he leaves now. He leaves to go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> he leaves. He always left to go to the bathroom, but now he like explores. So he leaves to go to the bathroom. In two nights in a row, I had to get in my car. I hear Nicole. She's like, the cat's not here. I got to go find him. And I'm His like, name's oh Tom. My God. I was like, Tom's not here. I got to go find him. So I, I drive in our car and I was like, there's no way I'm going to find him. This is the first night. I have my flashlight and I'm like, Oh my God, there he is. And he's like, it's a, oh, it's a blizzard outside, you guys. I was frantic. I was like, he's going to die. He's going to die. He doesn't know where he is. He can't hear. Like he's, something's going to happen. I find him. I scoop him up. I put him into a cat carrier. I bring him back and he's lays back in bed and he's like happy. He's like, oh, basically, thank God I'm home. That's how (laughs) I felt. The next day he does this to me again and I had to go get him. I found him and like very quickly. Same process. And then yesterday it happened again. Third time. (laughs) But now, so basically is it weird to go track down a cat? Because I do think that he can find his way back here now that he's a little bit, I think he, so he left for a little bit and I was like, okay, I'm going to give him, this was during the daytime. I'm like, I'm giving a little bit of time. And he did come back. And so I think I need to maybe let him explore more, right? You know, well, one, I think that's weird. Two, and I don't talk about my my job a lot, right? I don't talk about my police job a lot. But you would definitely, I had a woman one time, she called 911 because somebody stole her cat. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. then I go over there to her house. I'm like, ma'am, tell me what happened. Well, we have a feral cat. Right, with a feral cat means it's a stray cat, right? It lives outside and doesn't live in anybody's house. So. Yeah, but Twix is Twix is technically my cat. It's so. a, no, it's not. So it's so anyway. The, she said that some kids came over and took her feral cat from outside. Well, yeah, they shouldn't outside. be able to do that. <laughs> it's a feral cat. What are it's they going to do? Oh, cat. What are they going to do with they the cat? They were just taking care of the cat. Oh, if they're taking care of the cat, that's nice. Yeah, but yeah. so if somebody came and took the cat that's out here, any of the cats that are out here, would you consider that stealing? Yes. You would consider that stealing. If they come in my garage? And you don't own the cat. Yeah, that's those are technically my cats. Like I have told the neighbors, you better leave <laughs> these cats alone if they're my cats. <laughs> <laughs> you would be that person calling 911. They stole my cat. Okay, so what, do you, how long have you had the cat? Well, the cat, he lives outside. Uh, he roams so the neighborhood. So you're saying that animals, out, Twix doesn't roam the neighborhood, though. Twix never leaves. If Twix left, oh, man, I'd be real sad. 
<laughs> anyway, so I guess my weird or normal story is that I do take it maybe a little too far sometimes, but I do think that the cat may not have survived. And so for me to sleep well at night, I have to make sure my cats are tucked in, my dogs are tucked in, and Victor, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nicole and these cats, I swear, when we get a farm, I, it'll be... It's, uh, it'll be a lot better, but I think the cats are going to multiply, which I don't know how that's going to work it's out. It's good for for me. It's just really good for me to focus on. It's good for her soul. It's really good for me. I, I'm a caretaker, I think, and so I love to take care of them. They depend on me, and so I move my schedule around for which, them. Which, and I have to remind Nicole. And even if it wasn't a cat, I'm just saying if it was like my dogs, I do the same thing. And I just want to say that my one dream goal in life is to become part of a lion pride. <laughs> <laughs> or like Weird or a, normal. <laughs> or, a, or a monk or like a family of monkeys. Like I really want to be part I really want to be part of a lion pride so bad. Is it weird or normal <laughs> to want to be part of a lion pride? Oh my god, I want him to run up and hug me and like protect me. And- <laughs> And oh. play fight with you, but actually, like, cut you open on accident. And- no, they don't do that. <laughs> I watched this. I follow this guy named Dean, Dean S. Oh, yeah, I showed you him. No, you didn't. I already followed him before you <laughs> showed me I found him, him no, and I showed didn't. Nicole, and I was like, look at this he's guy. He's like, look at this guy. I'm like, I've been following him for years. I'm like, okay, Nicole, I found him. Oh, he's so annoying. <laughs> but I love, like, he's part of the Lion Pride. It's so freaking cool. The thing is, I, I love animals, too, mm-hmm. but sometimes I think... It's unsanitary the way, you know, totally some things, you know, like I am worried about that a little bit. We like if we if like I said, once we have a farm and we have the space for that, that's yeah. dedicated, like I'm out in work clothes and, yeah. you know, the cats are that's fine. But right now they're on our stuff that's in the garage and I don't like that too much. That's the only thing. But Two any- of them are really, really clean, though. The blind and deaf one, though, that it needs to go to the vet. That's why. And also... Anything um, to make uh, my baby girl Lisa happy. Don't call me that. Big girl Lisa. Stop it. <laughs> That's from before the 90 day. Yeah, 90 people day don't understand that. Then that's gonna- Some people get the reference. If you understand this reference, can you please leave a review talking about uh, that baby girl Lisa? <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Is it okay? So that's the weird or normal. Is it weird or normal to want to be part of a lion pride? <laughs> the whole cat story to be part of a lion. Oh, and I, 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 I always have to remind Nicole that Twix, the cat that she loves so much, Which that's also the newest has a one vet here. Appointment uh, on the day this is coming out. Yeah, uh, I'm the one that took care of it, and that's the reason he stayed. That's when she was gone on Big Brother. She came here, or he came here, and he stayed here. Because of the love and care that I gave him. He didn't even give the cat water. What do you mean? I gave him food and water. <laughs> Come on. I did give him. It might not have been every day. And then sometimes I'd get mad because he'd spill it all over the place right after I put it out there. But he he survived that I'm, whole time. I'm proud that you he survived. He survived that whole time. Twix, my plan with Twix is to, um, he's like eight months, is to eventually be able to make him a house cat. For somebody else. No. Yes, your puppies will not get along with a cat inside the house. They didn't grow up with cats. Oh, jeez, Louise. I'm just saying eventually, like, that's the plan. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, I just... I'm not a cat freak, you guys. I don't like kitty litter. <laughs> like, I just don't like kitty litter in the house. It's just... Uh, I sound like such a... a cat lady. She's I, a cat lady. I'm an animal lady. I'm I'm for whatever. If I had... It's um, just that the cats are here. That's yeah, If thing. I had... Something else wrong. Well, when we have a farm, we're going to have, you know, maybe a horse or two and a, you know, goat. Yeah, I would take, if I had like, if I had bunnies out there, for instance, I'd be doing this for the bunnies. You get what I'm saying? I got you. But um, cats are really smart and and they do, they take care of themselves and they really do have nine lives. Okay. Anyway, take us out, baby. What do you mean? Take us out. Close out the show. You got it. I forget how to start it. Thank you guys so, so much. Please don't forget to... Thank you guys so, so much. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. The easiest way. The easiest way is on Apple Podcasts, a little purple app on your phone. <laughs> there okay, she go, goes. Go ahead, go ahead. No, keep going. I this don't know great. the rest. You got it. You can listen to us anywhere. Go ahead, Vic. You got it. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Come on. Finish it. Where can you listen, babe? Google Play. Stitcher. And... Spotify, or you can always go to www.cococalientepodcast.com. And you can also check out our merchandise, but we're getting new merchandise. We're getting new merchandise, but there is still some stuff up there. We're trying to sell out of everything before we get new stuff. And... (laughs) 
He's so crazy, you guys. Don't forget to... Follow us at Coco Caliente Pod on Twitter and Coco Caliente Podcast on Instagram. Oh, I got the biggest smile on my face. (laughs) I'm loving it. Thanks, guys. (laughs) 